Hello guys, welcome back to Watch Time. Today's movie recap will be a romance and thriller movie from 2024 called Marmalade. Warning, there are spoilers ahead. The film starts with Baron, a naive young man who is arrested with a lot of money after a robbery. He's then put in a maximum security prison and shares a cell with Otis, a seasoned criminal known for escaping from prison. Desperate, Baron pleads with Otis to help him escape because he needs to meet his girlfriend at a secret spot the next day. Otis, who doesn't trust anyone, hesitates but agrees when Baron offers him $250,000 for a successful escape. Curious about the source of the money, Otis listens as Baron recounts his story. Baron used to work at a local post office, buying medicine for his dying mother, Ida, with his earnings. But after being fired for not cutting his hair, he finds out the cost of Ida's medication has increased. Despite the setback, he tells Ida not to worry, saying he will handle it. Unable to find another job, Baron ends up at a park where he meets a pink-haired woman named Marmalade. Initially, she drives away but returns to find Baron angrily hitting a swing with a tree branch. She teases him and introduces herself. They start hanging out, and Baron shows her some local spots. Marmalade shares that she grew up in foster care, and Baron talks about his mother's illness and never knowing his father. As they discuss the high cost of the medication, Marmalade suggests that if the system fails him, he should make his own rules. They grow close, and Marmalade spends the night at his place. With no income, they consider ways to afford Ida's medication. While Baron suggests renting out rooms, Marmalade proposes robbing a bank, which shocks Baron. But seeing no other option, he agrees. They scout banks, plan their movements, and even practice shooting. Eventually, they decide to get matching tattoos on their ankles. Marmalade gets a tattoo of a heart with Baron's name inside it, while Baron plans to have Marmalade's name on a jar tattoo, but the tattoo artist needs to correct the first R. They decide to change it to Mama to honor his mother. One day, Baron notices some of his mother's medication is missing, and when he asks Marmalade about it, she ignores him. They go shopping for their robbery plan and later break into a wooden shed to use as a hideout. Later, Baron asks Marmalade to tell him about her past and her mother. She reluctantly shares that she no longer speaks to her biological mother because she didn't protect her from her abusive foster father who locked her in dog cages, abused her, and beat her with other foster kids. Baron comforts her and promises to protect her, calling himself her knight in shining armor. They then go to buy masks for the heist. Marmalade picks two expensive masks, but when Baron reminds her they can't afford them, she tries to rob the store. Unable to open the safe, she knocks out the cashier and they flee. Baron feels guilty about the robbery and suggests finding other ways to make money, but Marmalade convinces him they need just one big heist. That night, they hear Ida coughing, and Marmalade checks on her. Soon after, she runs out screaming, and Baron finds his mother dead. Marmalade claims she doesn't know what happened, saying she had left the room briefly. In prison, Otis consoles Baron about his mother's death, sharing that his mother has been ill for most of his life, and he's unsure if she's still alive. Baron asks why Otis hasn't visited his mother, and Otis explains that his relationship with her is complicated and she lives in Kingston, Jamaica. Later, in the prison dining hall, inmates bully Baron, but when one tries to hit him, Otis intervenes and starts a riot. The guards take Otis away, revealing that he's not an inmate but an undercover FBI agent trying to capture Marmalade, a known serial robber. Otis was placed as Baron's cellmate to get information about Marmalade. They plan to stage an escape for Baron, hoping he will lead them to her. They even track Baron's phone call, thinking it might help them find Marmalade. Later on, Otis goes back to his cell and asks Baron to keep telling his story. Baron shares that after his mother died, he tried to get his old job back at the post office, but Marmalade didn't agree because she was pregnant. She pushed for them to do the robbery right away to provide for their future child. Before the heist, they prayed for success. Baron decided to stay outside and only be the getaway driver. Marmalade dressed in her signature all-pink outfit and three-faced mask, and they went to the bank. Baron started to panic, but Marmalade calmed him down. She went inside to rob the bank while Baron waited in the car. Soon after, Marmalade ran out, and they escaped to their hidden cabin. There, Marmalade joyfully threw the stolen money around the room. However, Baron was worried that they had stolen too much money and questioned Marmalade about her knowledge of robbing banks. Reluctantly, Marmalade admitted she had done many bank heists before, but only got small amounts of money. She had planned to stop robbing banks before she met Baron, but decided to do one last job with him. Baron was upset by this, but they eventually reconciled, reminding each other that they now had to think about their child as well. Later, Marmalade asked Baron to retrieve their masks from the car to burn them. While doing so, Baron found a bottle of his mother's pills hidden in the car. 
Furious, he confronted Marmalade with a gun, asking why she had the pills. Marmalade pleaded, saying she kept them for emergencies and forgot them in the car. Just then, the police surrounded the cabin, demanding they surrender. Baron suggested they give up and apologize, but Marmalade proposed they split the money and meet later at their favorite spot. Agreeing, Marmalade took half the money and left, while Baron surrendered to the police. Back in prison, Otis promised to help Baron escape, asking him to disclose their meeting spot with Marmalade. Baron kept it a secret but promised to give Otis $250,000 as agreed. The next day, a guard disguised Otis as a laundry worker. Otis hid Baron in a laundry basket and tried to sneak him out, but they were stopped by a guard unaware of the escape plan. Otis handed Baron a car key and pushed him outside before being detained himself, though he was soon released by FBI agents. Baron escaped and the FBI followed him to a florist where he bought flowers, presumably for his mother's grave, and then to an ice cream shop, their usual hangout, suggesting it was their secret meeting place. After Baron drove off, the FBI followed closely until he stopped, but when they went to catch him, they found that the driver was just an employee from the ice cream shop. The employee explained that Baron had given him the car, telling him he could keep it if he drove it around town successfully. At this point, Otis realizes that Baron has tricked him. He orders a thorough search for Baron and Marmalade. It turns out that Baron left the ice cream shop in a yellow car. He drives to the cabin and finds bags of money hidden in the chimney, along with newspaper clippings that show Baron knew all along that Otis was an undercover agent. Meanwhile, Otis rushes to the grave Baron visited, only to discover it wasn't Ida's grave, and instead of flowers, there's a jar of marmalade labeled Mama matching his tattoo. Otis checks the bank's CCTV footage and realizes that Baron is pretending to be clueless but is very clever, and the person in the footage with the same tattoo is Baron. It's then revealed that marmalade never existed, it was all Baron in disguise. Baron then cuts his hair, dresses in drag, and bypasses a police checkpoint, escaping as a woman. Once out of town, he enters a pharmaceutical store as Mr. Lamram to pick up a large order of Pleonexia for Ida Lamram, which spells marmalade backward. At the same time, Otis and his team track Baron's prison call to Baron Pharmaceutical, where they meet CEO Don Frankel. Frankel reveals the stolen money was his, and he's furious the robber hasn't been caught. Otis suspects Frankel is the abusive foster father from Baron's story, confirms he still fosters children, and has his team check for cages. The FBI confirms Otis's suspicion and arrests Frankel. Later, Otis finds a moon pie in his car's mirror, signaling Baron was nearby recently. Baron visits a nearby store, where the pharmacist reveals that Baron bought all the pleonexia and went to a travel agent. Otis meets the agent and finds an envelope from Baron with a note saying, Life can only be understood backward, but it must be lived forwards. I'm taking care of my mother. I hope you'll do the same. Farewell, secret agent. Otis also finds first-class tickets to Jamaica for him to visit his mother. The next day, Baron parks at a nursing home and goes inside. He hands out free medication to the residents and finally reaches Ida's room to refill her medication. He joins her, offering a moon pie as they look out the window together. And that's where our story ends. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to give a thumbs up and subscribe. Take care and see you next time.